everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, decided to do a live today because Parker's last day of school was yesterday. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm really happy school's over because by the end of the year, I'm just ready. I'm just ready for rest and relaxation. And um, as much as I want him to have a great education, uh, I'm a little selfish, so I want to kind of hang out and do my own thing, and now we can sleep in, well, I can't, I have to work, but he can sleep in and relax, we don't have to rush for the bus in the morning, we don't have to grab our, our breakfast right away or run the chance of running late, which is always awful, so in celebration of no more school, I think, I think most of the kids are out now, but a couple may still have some exams, but in celebration of no more school, I decided that we would do, um, I would show you how to do something for kids indoors so that on those rainy days or in general, when they're like, I'm bored, which happens what, like a week after school ends, I'm bored. Um, at least that's how it always was with my kids. You can whip this out and have them do something very creative um, that any level of artists can do adults and children so and i would say you could go even as young as like four and five on this project because it is something that you can do with them um when you get younger it'll be a little more messier but um it's not it's not a really challenging project so i did this with um, wilson elementary pta and the kids really loved it it's um, like i said because it's for any level child it's great because somebody who may not be as artistic as somebody else can still walk away with a fairly nice piece of art to hang in their room or maybe even in their home. So my husband, my son and I did this, we've done it a few times and I've done it with my grandchildren and I do have them. Um, actually the, right now a bunch of them are in my son's room, but I have, I do display them. Um, many of them were done in red, white and blue. So around 4th of July, I display them on our mantle. So, like I said, fun project. You can use any size canvas. You can't, you need canvas for this project. You can't use paper because we are going to use, where did I put my tape? That oh, right here. We're going to use tape with this. So we're painting on canvas. You can use any kind of paint. You can use house paint if you want. You can use acrylic, which is what I'm gonna use. Um, and you don't have to buy the expensive acrylic. It can be like the, you can get like these little, you know, like the, the little jars, um, or you might even have some at home moms, the little jars for like the um, toll painting and stuff. So it doesn't have to be expensive paint, but if you are gonna buy some acrylics paints, what you can do is invest in these. This is Artist Loft. So it's kind of like, um, it is a student grade or lower grade paint, but it, it works great. Um, but you can get these bigger bottles much cheaper. And you can also get um, Craft Smart paint. So there's that too. Um, and they have bigger bottles as well. So I do this for the kids because they don't need to have super expensive paint. And then I save the expensive stuff for myself. Um, you don't have to go crazy with paint brushes. You can get um, uh, Artist Loft, again, is sold at Michael's and maybe even Joanne Fabrics. So you can get those types of paint brushes. And you're going to want, though, a fairly larger brush, so something um, along the lines of, and flat, a flat brush, but you don't have to do that. So something along the lines of this, okay, or even this. And like I said, they don't need to be um, expensive brushes, right? Some of these, though, with these, the metal with the, um, the yellow bristles don't hold up really well. I found that I did buy a couple packages of these for the kids and they get really frustrated because the bristles will fall out into the paint as you're paint brushing. And um, that's not fun for anybody, whether we're advanced or not. So I kind of stayed away from these, but these brushes, and I believe these were Artist Loft. Um, this is the brand. Oh, I use them for charcoal and stuff too. So this has charcoal on it. But um, these work really good for, um, for this project and just in general. I even use them for my really good paintings for commission work and stuff. I like them. So they're worth the investment and they're not expensive at all. 
and you can get different sizes. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you just a quick demo, and then you guys will be um, ready to do this with your grandchildren or your children, or if you are a babysitter. So it's great for that. So I'm going to switch you to the other camera. So here are your supplies. You need um, tape. You can use either masking tape or um, Daisy Quiet or painter's tape. I like Daisy. I like the painter's tape because it comes off, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, it comes off nice and easy. Daisy, sorry, my dog. She's always got the center of attention. Hang on. Hey, no, down. No bark, no bark. Okay, sorry about that. It's live. Um, you'll want paint, so stick to minimal colors. You just need maybe two, three paints at the most. And then you're going to want your paint brushes, some water, and a little, if you're going to mix paint, you don't have to, but some kind of um, palette to mix paints on. For the kids, I use these. Um, these were the old um, plates they had when they were kids. But I, uh, when I did like the um, elementary school and stuff, I just bought paper plates. They work great. And then you just throw them out when you're done. You can also use saran wrap, like lace the saran wrap down and let them mix on that or foil, anything like that that's cheap. You don't have to run out and buy expensive stuff. And then if you want any kind of like little template so that we can, um, like this can make great circles. We can press it down on the canvas and make wonderful circles. And then you're going to want your canvas. Um, so I usually buy these. They're, they're thinner, right? This is an 8x10, and you can get them in um, packs. You can also get bigger canvases or smaller canvases. I wouldn't go too much smaller for the canvas um, because you want to have some white space left. Um, but you can get these. You can get them on the website dickflip.com. That's where I got these. They're very, they're much cheaper. You can get them at Michael's in packs, or you can get the um, Daisy, Daisy down, or you can get the three-quarter inch canvases. Um, that that way, they you can just paint them and then hang them. With these, you need to frame them somehow. But they're cheaper. They're cheaper than buying other canvases. So I get these for the grandchildren a lot. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to switch it to the other camera, maybe if I can, um, let's see. Oh, maybe I can't. So in that case, I will just lift it. It's not going to let me switch. So what you do is you take your canvas and your tape, right? And you're going to go ahead and just tape off a random design doesn't have to be anything special and the kids can do this. They can make any design that they want. So they can place their tape in any spot on the canvas that they want. What you need to remember is make your tape longer than the canvas itself, the pieces, because we want to be able to pull these off when we're done. So you want to have these little tabs. I've, I've kind of wrapped them around the canvas um, so that you can take those and pull it off when we're done. So what we're going to do is you tape this down. You get your design. You want to leave white space in between. If you put your tape too close to each other, it's going to be like a big white blob. So make sure you've got space in between your pieces. So you can see I've got some space here and up in here. Oh, up in here and up here. Oh, it's all backwards to me. Um, so don't put them really close to each other and don't fill too much of the canvas with tape. Just remind them of that because we actually, this is going to be the actual design of the picture when we're done. So we're going to paint right over this and then we're going to peel the paint off and when, where the tape is, is going to be white strips and that's going to be the actual picture. So you've got this, so you've taped it off and then you're just going to take some paint colors. It doesn't matter. I like to do, um, I, because they're the cheap paints, you have limited color, but I show the kids how to how to mix too. But we'll just for today, we'll just show you. Um, I'll just put some. Now you'd want to put this on a palette, right? So you're going to squirt the paint out and give them a couple of colors, and they don't need a lot. Um, paint goes a long way. Let me get this out. Just use newspaper underneath their pro their area um, to kind of keep it clean. 
Use paperwork's great, lay it all over the table, and then like an old blanket or sheet underneath the table in case any paint gets spilled. Or, or do it right outside, that's the best. Um, and then you can take your paintbrush and section, you can paint in sections. So I've got some blue and I'll put some red on here and I'll show you really quick how this kind of comes out. So we've got some red and I will also do, I'll do another shade of blue just to kind of keep it coordinated a little bit. But this is a great way to teach children about the color wheel and complementary colors and um, uh, show them how to mix colors with your primary colors, how you can take red, blue, and yellow and get any color you want by mixing them in different ratios. So it's a great project to teach them about color and to teach them about how complementary colors in the color wheel. Um, and if you don't know, just do a quick search on Google and they'll break it down for you really easy to kind of teach your kids. So I've got those colors. So now I'm going to take my brush. I have to clean this one because I um, had used it for charcoal. So let me see. I don't know how this is going to turn out because I had some charcoal in it, but we'll try. I use paintbrushes a lot in graphite and charcoal. So then we take our canvas. We're going to take our colors and just have the kids paint. They can paint the whole thing one color if they want, or they can paint sections different colors. So again, you can also teach them about color balance and asymmetrical paintings and symmetrical paintings, all that stuff. So just by this simple project, or this is like a geometric painting, not necessarily abstract. We're not removing from um, our true life thing, but we're doing more of a geometric pattern, more shapes. So you're just going to cover the spots. If you do use a canvas that has the three quarter inch side, ask the kids to paint all along the edges as well. So that when it's done, the, all the sides are painted and you don't have to worry about it. So we'll paint that blue. And then I'm going to put blue in another, the same blue. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put here because I kind of want this to be more of a blue canvas. So. I'm just doing this quick because of the live, but when you're doing it, you'll want to do one, one coat. These paints, because they are cheaper, um, they don't necessarily coat as well. So you're going to want to let it dry and then probably put another coat on. Um, have the kids, you know, maybe give them lunch and then have them go back and put their last coat on it. But it's totally up to them. This is their painting, so maybe they won't want to. So we've got that. Now I'm going to put some red in here. So just clean our brush as best we can. I'm going to throw some red. I'm going to do it down here, right here, and right there. And you just kind of stay, um, try not to go past the paint or the tape. You can because you can, with paints, you can always paint over. So if the kids accidentally see how I got blue in this triangle, who cares? Because we're going to paint right over it. Um, so they can always touch it up. So I'll put some red in that triangle, um, which is going to mix a little bit with the blue and actually make purple. So I would have to, if I were going to really do this as a really nice painting, I would want to do go over it twice with the red. But I'm not worried about it. This is just to show you guys. So we got that one in there. And then I'm going to do one more red up right up here. I'm going to put some red. So I'm going to throw that up there. And then I'm going to do the light blue and these. Actually, I'm going to do two spots red. Paint the edges as well. Um, and then I'm going to throw a pop of red over here in this corner. And then I'm going to leave my last square for the light blue. So I'm going to clean so you can see we got this. Um, Clean the brush, and then I'm going to put my powder blue in this square right there. So we'll pop that in. Now when you're taping down these, um, the tape on the canvas when you first start, mom and dad, you might want to run your finger along the edges of the tape. Just be sure it's really down. The kids don't always do that. 
And what will happen is the paint seeps through and they get very discouraged because it's got fuzzy edges. So, um, you know, you want to you want to kind of help them with that or tell them to do it if they're older. And then as you're painting, it's always best to go if the tape is here, it's always best to start on the tape and pull away rather than into the tape. Because if you paint into the tape, you take more of a chance of getting those fuzzy edges. So that's our painting. You can see it doesn't take a lot of time. I would then, if I were really gonna do this, I would let it dry completely and then go back and do it again. And then once it's completely dry, you can pull the tape off. Now, I'm not gonna make you guys wait that long. So I'm gonna try to pull the tape off while it's wet. However, I may have, it may cause errors. So the paint, because it's wet and it's kind of drippy, it may get under the tape. So we may not have these really perfect edges. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this with your kids, wait for it to dry and then take the tape off. The kids often want to rush it um, and they really shouldn't because if they take it off while it's wet, they're going to smudge it and it's not gonna look as good. So it's a good way to teach patience too, right? Wait for it to dry so it looks nice. Um, the other thing too is just so you guys know, acrylic paints dry lighter than what they're originally put on. So if I were to let this dry the whole time, you'd see that these colors are going to be much lighter than what they are right now. So that's always something to remember too, that if, if you are seeing canvas through, um, you definitely want to put another coat on and then let it dry and it will be slightly lighter. Not that it really matters. It's more for when you're doing portraits and stuff, but anyway. So let's try this. Let's try taking it off. Uh, I gotta take, oh, I gotta take this one off first. It's on top. So you just pull these off. So you can see, I'll pull these off carefully. Oh, see how it, it ran a little bit? See the edge? Um, but you can always take white paint when you're all done take white paint and just touch up where any edges might have smudged. So um, I think it's this piece now can come off. So we'll take that off. And this piece. So here is my fabulous painting, which did smudge. And because it's wet and I didn't wait, see how my fingerprints right here? Oh, on this side, see how they got the paint? So that's why you want to wait for it to dry, but see how some of the wet spots on the tape, they came through. So if this were my painting, and you can hang it any way you want, which is cool, but if this were my painting and I really wanted to fix it up, I'd let it dry again. I'd let it dry, and then I would just take white and touch up those smudgy spots. But that's it. A really, really easy project to do with the kids. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful. I'm going to try to post some of these throughout the summer for you guys. Um, we've had a very rainy spring, so I'm wondering if we're going to have a very rainy summer. So this will be a nice way to distract the kiddos. And it gives them something to be really proud of. They're really excited about it. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.